Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to properly set up a Mac device like a laptop or a Mac mini or an iMac for a child. Now, these are my kids' MacBook Airs and we purchased MacBook Airs for them because this year we are homeschooling and a lot of kids in schools use Chromebooks and my kids' experience in the past was with Chromebooks, but we wanted to go with Macs because they're gonna provide a much more well-rounded computing experience for my kids and allow them to utilize software on their computers that Chromebooks just don't offer. Properly setting up a MacBook Air, which is what these devices are, so that your child has a safe access to using a device and also has their own account is pretty important to get right from the beginning. And so I'm gonna walk you through my process for doing this and you'll kind of watch me go through the setup process. Uh, of course, there are lots of different little things that you can do along the way to tweak the experience, but I'm gonna do my best to walk you through this process. So the best best way to remember all of this is really just to take notes. You can of course refer back to this video and there will be timestamps and stuff like that that you can follow through, but probably the best thing to do is just to take some notes, especially if you have multiple devices to set up like I did. So first thing you're going to do is open up the laptop and turn it on. If it's a brand new laptop that you've never used before, it's going to open up right to the welcome screen. If it is a device that maybe you formatted, maybe it was your old device and you are repurposing your old laptop or Mac computer for a child, then you'll likely be on this welcome screen also. If you are adding an account to an existing Mac for a child, then you're gonna jump forward in this setup process a little bit and I'll let you know where you'll jump back into that process. So open up the laptop and just go through the first initial setup screens like choosing your language, connecting to your local Wi-Fi and stuff like that. You'll want to get to the iCloud login where you're gonna log in to your iCloud account, you would think maybe you would log into your child's iCloud account, but you want to be the admin on your computer. You want to be the admin with the highest level of rights on that computer. And so you don't want to add your child's account first. You want to log into your account, making you the admin, which means their account is going to be a sub user. And we'll walk through that process uh, a little bit later in this video. You may need to confirm your login three digit code may get sent to your iPhone. It might get sent to your Apple watch, your iPad, or even your other Mac, just to confirm that the login is authentic. And so you'll want to have one of your other devices nearby so that you can log in successfully. You then want to create a, a username by just adding your name, uh, and then it'll create a username and also a password for this device. I opted just to go with my first name, last name. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to be logged into this device really for anything other than maintenance and maybe installing some software for my kids. So so it doesn't really matter, but you want it to be memorable so you don't forget it. And then the password, I decided to go with a unique password that was separate from the passwords that I use on my other computers. You know, kids, they want full access. They might be poking around or something like that. And if they happen to get the password off of me somehow from their for their computer, I don't want it to be the password to my other devices. So I opted to set a unique password and I use one password to manage all of my passwords. Talked about that in another video. So just I'll link to my one password video in the description below. But that's a great video on the subject of passwords and using unique passwords so that you don't end up leaking a password that you don't want other people to have. I realized that school Schools are not doing that great of a job of teaching our kids how to use computers. Yes, they're learning how to use Google Docs and stuff like that in Google Classroom, but how are they going to learn how to actually use a computer and care for it? That is something I found that my children were not learning at school, and I've had to teach them how to use a computer, how to care for a computer, and make sure that they're getting the most out of their experience as a user of that computer. So if you found that your kids have the same problem, they know about technology, but they they don't know how to use technology, then my introduction to Max is going to be a fantastic course. Check out the link down in the description below to sign up for that course and get access. Your kids will be walked through the entire process from things they might already know how to do, like turning on the computer, but they'll learn how to run software updates and properly care for their computer, making sure that it doesn't get clogged up with files and run into issues down the road that end up being frustrations, not only for them as their computer doesn't run that well anymore, but also for you as a parent who just wants their device to do its job. Check out the link below to get access to that course today.
So after you log in, you want to enable the find my services, find my device. What that's going to do is it's going to assign that laptop or that computer to your Apple ID account. So that way, if you need to find the device, you'll be able to do that from your own account. After that, I enabled my fingerprint because these laptops have the fingerprint reader and I wanted to easily be able to log in using my fingerprint. Next, it'll ask you to add any payment methods that you might have on other devices uh, through Apple Wallet. I bypassed this step because I don't want my payment information synced over from my iCloud account to these devices. After that, I was presented with a setup Mac ready to go, but it's not ready for my kids yet. And it's also not ready for us to fully set up because there's likely software updates that need to be ran. Depending on where you bought your Mac, it's likely that there is at least a software update to run. So go up to the Apple menu down to system settings, which will open up the settings app. And then under the general tab, you will see software updates. Now, older versions of Mac OS required you to go to the Apple menu and go to about, and then there's a little button for software updates. So you might have to to look around and find where that software update button is. If your Mac is newer, then it's probably going to be under the settings app like I talked about first. If it's an older Mac, then it might be under the Apple menu under about where software updates is. But if you're struggling to find it, find the version of the Mac that you're using, which would be the size of the Mac, the style of the Mac. There also will be a model number etched onto it somewhere that usually starts with an A. You can do a Google search for that model number and software updates or how to update software. And you'll find a video or an article showing you how to update the software, but make sure you run the software updates. And that may take a few minutes after that process is done. The computer will restart and it will bring you back to that login screen where you can log in with the username and password that you created earlier in the setup process. So after getting logged in, I used Safari to download Google Chrome. And I've got a few reasons for that. Why I'm going to use Google Chrome and not Safari. I'm using third-party software to monitor my kids devices and I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of this video but it doesn't work well with Safari now Safari is really good because Safari has screen time integration and so if your child is on also an iPhone or an iPad or another iOS device you can set parental restrictions for Safari that will sync across all of those devices. But I like Chrome for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's cross-platform. So if they decide to use a Windows PC or have a need to use Windows, Chrome is gonna look and operate the exact same. It also works a lot better with Google Docs, Google Sheets, and all of those different Google Classroom type of experiences that my kids may find themselves using through their homeschooling experience as they do different classes that have different needs. And so Google Chrome was just a better fit for me. I also like the ability to install extensions such as ad blockers and stuff like that. And there's a lot more options when it comes to Google Chrome. Safari does have these options, but I find Google Chrome just to be a better overall experience. And I like the fact that it is cross platform so that my kids can't just go over to Safari and access whatever they want. I used the screen time restrictions to choke down Safari and make Safari only work for accessing a certain amount of websites, which doesn't make Safari very useful to them. So Google Chrome is kind of the default that they're going to have to go and use. With that done, I'm ready to go and add an account for one of my kids. And so I go into the settings app and just type in user because the new menu, while a little bit easier to navigate, sometimes it's harder to find items. And so that nice search box at the top of the settings menu allows me to search for a setting that I'm looking for. So I just typed in user and add new user or user accounts showed up and I clicked on that. I clicked the plus button and I added an account by putting in the first and last name of my child, the username that I want on their computer, which was just first and last name, and then creating a password for them. Now, the password that I created for my kids is a challenging password of eight characters and symbols that they need to remember. I wanted to instill good password management in them from the beginning. And that means setting a password that is challenging and unique. And they're going to have to either commit to memory or have a secure way to store that password so that they can get logged into their computer. The same thing I do for myself. So that way in the future, when they're setting up passwords for things like online banking and things where sensitive information is, 
they have built into their minds that I need to use a secure password and I can't carry on some of the bad habits that maybe some of us that are older have had by using the same password over and over again. So my kids all have unique passwords for their computers that are specific and different. And it's crazy how fast they were able to commit those to memory. And now it is a password that they have in their mind, very easy for them to log in if they can't use their fingerprint to log in. After I finish creating the user login for my child, I go up to the Apple menu, go down to log out, and that logs me out of my account so that I can log into my child's account using their first last name and the password that I created for them. Upon doing that, the first thing the laptop wants to know is what's their iCloud account? Now, if they already have a device, an iOS device, an iPad or something like that, chances are maybe you created an iCloud account for them already. But if you don't have an iCloud account for them, there's a couple different ways that you can set that up. You can either create a new iCloud account right from the computer itself, which will set up a new iCloud account for them, but then it's gonna be a standalone iCloud account. Account, and you want that to be connected to your iCloud account so that you have parental controls. So the best way to set up a new iCloud account for a child is to do that from within the family settings on one of your other devices. I found the best way to do that is from my iPhone. I go into the settings app and then click on the main setting up at the top that has my picture and then go into the family settings, click the little plus at the top right hand corner and add an iCloud account for a child. That allows me to set a couple initial settings based on their age and appropriate things that I want them to have access to and also not have access to. Having that set up as a member of your family means that you can control all of their screen time settings from your mobile device. And since I had already done this and my daughter's computer that I'm using in this example has an iPod touch, I had to confirm her login using her iPod touch, which got that six digit code that I needed to take. So it, when you're setting this up, if your child has an existing iOS device, you'll need that so that you can get that six digit code to confirm the login. Now, after you log in, you'll get prompted with some of the same settings you did when you set up your account, such as turning on Find My so that they can find their device, utilizing one of their other iOS devices, and then adding their fingerprint for faster login. I went ahead and added my fingerprint so that I can easily log into their account as well. So if your child's not here at the moment while you're setting this up, you could of course set up their fingerprint later by going into the settings app, going down to touch ID and passwords, and then clicking on the add fingerprint option. Now, after that was set up, I went down to the dock that had all sorts of applications and started removing items from the dock that I didn't want to be distractions, such as the Apple TV app. You can do this in a couple different ways. You can click on one and hold and drag it up out of the dock all the way to the top of the screen and let go and poof, it's gone. Or you can simply right click and choose remove to remove it from the dock. I highly recommend removing as much potential distractions as possible from the dock because the doc is just sitting there begging for your child to do something else other than their homework or what they should be doing on their computer. I do the same thing on my own device so that I don't have items in the doc that are a distraction. Next, you'll wanna go ahead and open Google Chrome and get logged in to their Google account. Now, my kids have Google accounts and have had them for a long time and their Google accounts uh, include a Gmail account that I set up because I wanted them to have their name at gmail.com and so I set that up a long time ago. But then when they became of age to start using the internet, I connected their Google accounts to my Google account using Family Link. This is a Google service, not an Apple service. But what Family Link allows me to do is have parental controls over their Google account so that they can't log in and connect to other Google services or even third party apps unless it goes through my login. And you can set this up as strict or as loose as you want. The Family Link app is also available available for your iOS device so that you can manage their account from your mobile device easily. If your child doesn't already have a Google account, you can Google search Family Link Setup and go through the setup process of enabling Family Link on your Gmail and Google account and then adding family members to Family Link. I opted to have my kids use their Gmail account as their primary email account instead of iCloud. I know that iCloud comes with an email account and all of that stuff when you set it up, but if they ever wanted to switch platforms to a different device, that's not an Apple device, then they'd have to deal with moving to another platform. Gmail works across Mac, 
PC and other types of devices. So it just made sense for me to set up Gmail accounts for my kids and not use iCloud for their email. Once you have them logged into Google Chrome, you can do Google search for Chrome ad blocker extensions and install an ad blocker extension. I'll go ahead and link to the one that I use in the description below. On top of that, I also installed the Google extensions for Bark, which is a tracking service that I use to monitor my kids across all of their different devices. And I decided to use Bark because it goes way above and beyond what screen time is able to offer on a Mac. And of course, if they're on different devices, whether it's an Xbox or a PlayStation or uh, something like that, you want a service that can monitor them across all of those different devices. Some will say that Bark is a little heavy handed in what it tracks. But in my opinion, it's my household, they're my children, and it's my job to protect them against all of the different crazy things that are out there on the internet. And I don't see tools like this as an invasion of privacy, because in a household, we should have a level of trust together, being able to share what each other is doing and feeling okay with that without shame. And if we can't have that within a household, then I feel like I am not raising my children appropriately. I should be raising them in an environment where shame is not an element. If they want to see what is on one of my devices, I will show them what's on one of my devices. And I want to be able to protect them because most of the time when they stumble across something that they shouldn't have seen, it's going to be on accident and not because they intentionally wanted to seek something out. So it's very important for me to have have safeguards in place so that I don't intentionally allow my children to step into something that they're not going to be able to unsee. And Bark gives me better control over that across all of the different types of devices that they are using. And that is also a reason why I use Google Chrome over Safari. Bark does not work necessarily well with Safari, but it works really great with Google Chrome. In the coming weeks, I will produce a full review of my experiences with Bark. This is something relatively new that I've implemented, and I want a little bit more time using this service before I could produce a full review. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when that video comes out. Now, lastly, I decided to get a mouse for my kids' laptops. Now, why a mouse? Well, the laptops of a child are going to get pretty dirty. Their hands aren't always clean and sometimes are sweaty and laptops can get pretty dirty. So I wanted them to have a mouse that they can use that was easier to clean and separate from the computer so that they can utilize a mouse and then use the trackpad when they wanted to. My desk setup is keyboard in the middle, mouse on the right, trackpad on the left and so I can use the trackpad when I need that touch interface and I can use the mouse for everything else. I find it faster for me to use a mouse than the trackpad but I like having the touch interface of the trackpad. So the last thing that I set up of course, was the mouse. Now, there are a few apps that I installed on their devices besides Google Chrome. I installed 1Password. That allows them to have all of their passwords and important information stored within one piece of software and then have one password that they have to remember so that they can get logged in to 1Password. And they can access 1Password, whether it be on their computer or their iPads. My kids only have iPad minis. They don't have phones. And as I mentioned before, it's important for me to instill good password management into my kids early on. So with that, their computers were completely set up and the only thing left to do was to install specific software based on the interests that they had, things that they were learning. For example, one of my kids is learning 3D printing, so we installed Blender so that they can learn how to use Blender through online tutorials and Skillshare classes. My kids are taking a lot of Skillshare classes and Skillshare is fantastic because it gives them access to a ton of different content for one monthly rate that's very affordable and they can pick and choose and decide to take classes based on their interests. So one of my boys is taking a 3D printing class using Blender. My oldest daughter is taking a course on how to build miniature food with clay. And my oldest son is able to find things that he wants to learn in there as well. He's also taking my photography course, which is available linked below. So if you're interested in learning photography, you have a kid that wants to learn photography. I have a 30 week week course that teaches them everything they need to know about photography. They'll exit that course knowing a lot about photography and feeling confident behind their camera. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope that it helped you confidently get a device set up for a child in your family. And if you have any questions or there's anything that
it didn't make complete sense, ask me down in the comment section below. And lastly, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when I put out new videos.